So this week, I'm gonna do something a little bit different. I'd like to share my story about how I healed from endometriosis, IBS, and SIBO. So watch this video to learn how I did it. I'm Amanda Malachewski, certified functional nutrition and lifestyle practitioner and digestive and allergy detective. I help you figure out why your digestion is misbehaving and what you can do about it, even when you've been told you just have to live with it. I'm here to share my hard won, no BS, creative, all natural approaches to healing your gut struggles. So if you're ready to get down to work and get beyond your symptoms, be sure to subscribe to my channel to get notified of my new video every Monday. So it's really tempting to get sucked into all of the available protocols out there on the internet to heal things like endo or IBS or SIBO. There's lots of resources, there's videos, there's freebies and summits and whatnot. And what I'd like to share today is how my process has been really, really unique. So I'd like to share what I've learned about healing from these complex multi-layered issues. So here's my story. So 13 years ago, I had my first attack of severe ovarian pain. I found myself sitting on crinkly exam table paper in an ER on New Year's Day with my husband. And we had left our New Year's weekend getaway with our friends at our remote cabin near Trinity Lake in California. And I had been scared because the cabin's two to three hours away from any hospital or medical care and it was winter the roads were icy and i was afraid about what would happen in the middle of the night if you know something really went wrong i thought maybe i had appendicitis so we left early from our weekend and went back towards home and you know visited the er and we were there for a while and the doctor came in and said you know everything's really okay you're fine and so over the next number of years, nine years or so, as sometimes these symptoms flared and then went away, I continued to sometimes approach medical providers and say, there's a problem here. I'm not sure what's going on, but what can we do about this? And here's a sampling of some of the responses that I received from different providers. If it was cancer, you would be dead already. Uh, there are just some cysts on your ovaries. It's nothing to worry about, no big deal they'll heal up. Or at another one, one of them said, oh, your tests are fine. And this was at a medical visit where I was not only complaining about the pain, but also daily anxiety, weekly fatigue, and all these digestive upsets. And that didn't seem right. And then my favorite one was, maybe it's time to start practicing acceptance and stop looking so hard for something wrong. So I'm curious, let me know in the comments below if you've ever had a provider say something along these lines to you. So I was super confused because I was a really healthy person. I live on a homestead on 50 acres in a tiny little village in a remote corner of Northern California. I grow a lot of my own vegetables. I've eaten organic for over 20 years. And you know, I live a healthy lifestyle. So I was like, what's going on? But that's just what was happening. So for a while, I tried to believe what these doctors were telling me, that really I was okay and that I was really kind of overreacting or that nothing really bad was going on. But my symptoms kept getting worse. They got angry. And in 2015, I was laying awake in bed one night because there was this pain sensation that felt like a swollen rubber hose was squeaking on my ovaries and my guts. And you know, it was keeping me awake and I was like, well, what the heck is this? If nobody can see anything wrong, what's going on? And am I going to wake up and find that I'm one of those stories where something bad happened because nobody saw something soon enough? I mean, I have two young children, so I was really concerned. I was feeling really worried about how was I going to, you know, help them grow up? And, you know, was I going to be able to help them grow up? So I decided that I wasn't willing to settle for, we can't see anything wrong. I knew there was something wrong. I could feel it and I bet you can too. So I started looking for answers anywhere I could find them and I found them. I, there were answers out there and I found that I wasn't alone in my experience. Like, did you know that it takes an average of seven to 10 years for women with chronic symptoms to get the help that they need and a diagnosis and proper medical help? So after a lot of advocacy, I finally got a diagnosis of endometriosis in late 2015. And it was a presumed diagnosis because you really need to have surgery to truly diagnose it. Uh, so once I had this diagnosis, I then applied my 
thinking about root cause resolution to my endo because the reading I had done wasn't inspiring about the traditional treatments. So I decided to have wide excision surgery, which would remove the endo implants with a wide margin of healthy tissue. And um, the recurrence of endometriosis from this surgery is only about 7% versus a much higher percentage rate for ablation. So I went in for surgery in April of 2016, and I was terrified, but I did it anyway. And after surgery, I did have a really marked reduction in ovarian pain and anxiety. And when my surgeon came to report on what had happened in there, um, it was clear why, because all of my organs were fused together with scar tissue. He removed huge chocolate cysts from my ovaries and saved them. I was able to hold on to those. And, um, you know, it was really no wonder that I had all these pain symptoms and all these digestive symptoms with all this scar tissue binding everything up. So I was hopeful that I would come out of the surgery and my IBS like symptoms would be resolved, but I ended up being really disappointed. So probably as a result of the scar tissue, I was suffering from some really slow motility. I struggled with constipation that would sort of build up for a while and then I would have diarrhea. So at this point, I decided to run a stool test on myself to see what was living in my gut. And when that came back, I learned that I had several parasites. I had a bunch of um, pathogenic bacteria, some of which were our triggers for autoimmunity. And I also had a mild overgrowth of candida. Then I added on board a parasite elimination protocol and followed that with a bacterial protocol. So I was still having trouble with constipation and gut pain, and I worked on sorting out my food triggers even further despite the elimination diet. So I actually found that I had several that I wasn't aware of, and I found these out by using food symptom tracking. You can find my food symptom tracking diary in the comments below. And this is why I continuously stress the, um, the dangers of relying on simply a diet protocol, because even if it's a healthy diet, like all these diets that are being promoted are healthy, but they need to be customized for your body. No one diet protocol is the right thing. So next I turned my attention to SIBO, which is small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. And I thought maybe that's my problem. So I ran a SIBO breath test and it turned out that I had extremely high levels of methane gas. So I did a SIBO protocol and I definitely experienced some relief from my bloating symptoms and the constipation symptoms, but the methane was still super high. So then I had to start zooming way out and thinking, what am I missing here? So I had to start thinking about, you know, what was creating this environment so that these bugs and parasites and bacteria could continue to exist. And I also had to get serious about doing some basic digestion support. This was a piece that I had been missing. This step really can't be skipped if you expect to get anywhere with fixing your gut. So I then learned that a lot of people with ongoing problems like this that keep not resolving actually have worms. So I decided that I was gonna try a worm elimination protocol that involved using medicinal enemas. And I found worms. <laughs> I didn't really expect to see that. Well, I did expect to see that, but I was surprised by what I found. And so over a period of about nine months, I did a regular process of using medicinal enemas. And almost every time I did this process, I saw more worms. And as the worms left, I actually started to experience a lot less gut irritation. I was sleeping better. Uh, my brain was a lot more balanced. I had less anxiety and depression. I just felt overall better. Go figure. You know, there were those critters cruising around in there. Who wants that? So I know some of you are gonna get really excited about some pieces of this, like, oh, the parasite protocol or the bacteria protocol or the, the worm protocol, what did she do? And I'm happy to talk about those things with, with you if you're interested, but what I really want you to focus on and see is that you know, dealing with these issues is less about finding the magic protocol. It's a lot more about customizing what you're doing along the way troubleshooting and really focusing on what's right for you and learning from what you've done along the way. Okay, what do we know already based on what we've seen, what we've tried, and what haven't we tried yet? What haven't we thought of? What are we missing? That question, what are we missing, is so important in this process. 
And this is how we slowly but surely move ourselves ever closer to the solution that's really going to help you get what you're hoping for out of your treatment protocols and your process, which is presumably for me, you know, it's to be healthy enough to be with my kids. So just for example, I found that the baking soda enemas didn't really work great for me. I found that berberine, it's an herb that's often used in bacterial protocols. It doesn't work for me. I can't tolerate it. So, you know, we try these things and then we work around them and we find what does for work for us. We customize the dose, we customize the frequency, we customize the timing. My final protocol, I can talk about it, but it doesn't really mean a whole lot for you because what you really need to do is work through this process and use the approach to find what's right for you. So I hope that sharing my story has helped show you some new openings and new ways of thinking about your illness and your symptoms and how you might work through them to solve your IBS or your SIBO or even your endometriosis at the root cause level. So I want to invite you to grab your personal copy of my Roadmap to Recovery to figure out how you can apply this process to your own healing process. If you'd like to talk with me about your unique gut situation, please go to my website at confluencenutrition.com forward slash contact and schedule a free 30 minute assessment session with me. I'll be happy to talk with you about how things are going for you and what might be your next best steps. I also have a private Facebook group called Hope for Healing Chronic Illness, where you can get help from me and our community. So come check us out. And if you like this video, please let me know by liking it below, subscribe and share it with your fellow digestively challenged friends or family and comment below with helpful if this video helped you. See you next time.